So I'll run this under the bilge to the heads. So I'm going to put this conduit through those holes. Well, here's where the proverbial rubber hits the road. Right the new. Come on, my shoulder. So this is a schematic, and just to make sense of it. Now this is a significant step in the electrical installation for moving forward. Ha <laughs> ha. Holes in the floors, holes in the panels. Now I'm ready to start laying the conduit and the cable. I've got this one here in the cabinet, drilled and epoxy coated. Inside this cabinet, underneath at the bottom of this cabinet, that's done. There's one, two, three. And the two through the engine bed this side, and one on the other side. Well, to the best of my current knowledge, I've done everything that I really need to before I can actually finally get those galley tops in place and that they can freaking stay there. I've got one more thing I can do, which is to send this blue pressure hose under the bilges to the heads. So I'm gonna do that now. And as far as I can think, it's the only other thing that I really need to do here but I think, for example, when it comes to the saltwater pump, that can all be done with those tops on. So I've racked my brain, and I don't think I need these tops off at this stage for anything else. And as you saw, I've got this vent hose in place now, so that should mean these tops can go in place and stay there. So the idea with these holes through the hull floors is I'm going to put this conduit through those holes. Obviously the cable will run through those. It's in two pieces because as you could imagine, <laughs> trying to feed one, oh, let me just do that. Trying to feed that whole length, you just can't get it low enough to feed it through either hold at either end so what I've done is I've made it in two pieces that doesn't mean to say it's going to be easy it'll still be a bit of mucking around but at least it's not one full length and I'll just uh, join it there like that now the other thing is they're not in a straight line those holes for good reasons one is I'm trying to avoid the bilge here at this end I'm trying to avoid the through hole fitting at this end where that has to be screwed on and the handle operated after. So it was a bit of a compromise to get this to work, but I hope that it'll work okay. Now the other thing is, as you can see, I've got the heat gun and that's because those holes are not in a straight line. Some bending will be required. Now this conduit bends really easy. You might have seen that elsewhere or even on YouTube videos. So it does bend quite easy once heated, but I did a test on it and it does deform a bit. It will crease. So I didn't really get too much of a, 
angle bend there on that one before it started creasing. So I had a good think about it and what I really wanted to get a hold of was either a plumber's spring or a pipe bending mordrel and use that inside of this conduit to keep its radius nice and even and I don't know a plumber or anybody with those tools so I had a bit of a think and had a look around online at my local stores and I got this spring which I guess could be used for lots of different things but it's pretty firm pretty solid so I thought that is all I need it was ten dollars from Bunnings my local hardware store it's the exactly right size to be able to fit in there firmly so I'm hoping, I haven't yet tried it, but I feel pretty confident once that conduit's heated, put that spring in and I should be able to do a nice little bend, wait till it dries and then that spring should be able to pull out. I'm sure it won't go as easy as it looks now, but it should work. A little tricky to show you where this conduit's all running because the lighting's not very good. I'll do my best, but I do think it's come up really well and that should protect all those conductors, the cables, and get them running where they need to run. So this is where the LifePo, the lithium battery, will be housed, as I've said before. Conductors, cables going through this hole here. And then in this cabinet here, I'll actually be fastening this bit of conduit which will go from that bottom piece into the cabinet and then along to the house batteries here. Moving right along, it then goes through the bilges, making its way to the nav area where all the other electrical gear is housed. And so what we've got here is where the battery cables will come through and make their way to the AGM battery. The other one, the smaller one, closer to the whole floor there, is where the cabling will make its way over to that starboard side. And just to make mention, you can see that circle I've drawn on that conduit there. That's going to be a hole where the conduit to go across for the pumps will go through the bulkhead right there. Another thing I will be doing is just drilling a hole in the bottom of the conduit at the low point so that if there's any condensation getting in that conduit over time, well I should say when 
conjugates in that over time, it'll be able to drain out and not fill the conduit right up. Right the new, come on my shoulder. <laughs> if we have a look here, so here's a copy of my hard one wiring diagram for the power supply. So this is a schematic and just to make sense of it, I've got it laid out in this way, but it's not a replica of where things are exactly. It's schematic, as I say. So essentially you've got the house batteries here the engine, and then here is basically everything that's going to be located around about the navigation area. And so what I'm going to do first is the main cabling, the one where there's the most to sort out, and that's where this house battery is. Actually, just to point out, there's one thing that's not quite correct, which is the shunt location here. This shunt will actually be right back here at the house battery. I found out more about that, and it's far better to have your shunt right at the battery where it's going to be used to measure all the current going through. So if we start at that point, the house battery, the lithium, which is underneath the saloon seating that you've seen, the negative from the house battery needs to run to the nav area. Also the positive will need to go to the distribution panel. The start switch is actually also located in that navigation area. There's also, from the navigation area, after the starting battery, I'll have the DC-DC charger, and so that cable needs to be run to the house batteries. As I say, that shunt will be over here in the house battery, and so running from that shunt, there's actually five cables that need to be run also to the navigation area. There's going to be two positive wires running from the positive terminal of the house battery. That's indicated here, two positive cables, and then there'll need to be three negative cables that will run from the shunt to the navigation area, which is where the battery monitor itself will be mounted right near the distribution panel. Those three cables are indicated over here, and as I say, all of that is over this side. So there we go, people. The electrics on Mistress are well underway. You! I have spent a lot of time getting all, well most, that I need to continue with a proper 12 volt installation for Mistress's electrics. In the next episode, well, nearly, <laughs> we got this far. Yeah, no, that's... Well, I haven't even been pulling. Oh, what? Could I ask you a quick favour request for watching my video? To like, subscribe, click that bell and share it. I'd really appreciate that.